Blaze meter. So using Blaze meter Chrome extension. So let's go and search. This is another way we can carry out our, our Apache uh, J meter performance testing using Blaze meter Chrome extension, right? All right. So how do we go about? How do we go about that? So let me go back to Google and try to look for that. So. All right, so we want Blaze Meter. So if you go to your Google and type Blaze Meter Chrome extension, Chrome extension Blaze Meter, that should be it. I'm not sure. Let's see. Oh no, that's not it. This is it. But because I have it, that is why it's telling it remove from Chrome, but if you haven't downloaded be, downloaded it before, it will show you as download or install. Then you just need to click on it, install it, and after the installation is done, it's it's not a typical, it's just, it's not a technical thing to do at all. You just have to click on it that's all, to install or download. Then when that is done, you can see at the top of my screen, this thing that looks like rocket. That is the Chrome extension being downloaded for me, and that is what I'm going to use for the next uh, segment of the test. So let me go back to the slide. All right. So if I click on the jet stain, you can see I showed you just now my on my screen. It will open up this pop up for me, and this is where I'm going to run my JMeter, my test from now, using record and play, right? Because that's what the Chrome extension is for, using Blaze Meter. All right, actually, Bad Boy is one of the things that, but I haven't actually used Bad Boy before, but yeah, it's used, you can use Bad Boy for, so I think it's more like, I haven't used it personally before, so I believe it's more like a record and play as well, because actually I have it on here. And as I made mention earlier on, any file you want to export or import for JMeter, it has to be uh, .jmx. That is the only format of text that is recognized when loading up uh, JMeter. All right, so let's see how it works in action. All right, so let me go back to my Chrome. And I'll click on the Chrome extension that I downloaded previ uh, before, before this lesson. And I need to name, that is it, as you can see on your screen. And I think you have to register with BlazeMeter. Because I'm registered, that is why you can see my name here, I, I can. If you're not registered, you won't see your name on there. All right, I need to name my test now. That is the next thing I need to do. Uh, what is the name of this test? Let's say Blue Sky. Blue Sky demo 22 all right and then i'll click on hold on so and i'll click on start recording the red icon on your screen so when i click on it then the recording has started then now i need to navigate to the site i want to test on so ww www.qa.griffy.com. I click on enter. The page is loading, taking time, performance issue, or my Wi Fi issue. I don't know which one. Is this my network? I've been on this side before though. I don't know why the site is not loading. All right, finally it loads up. 
all right so i want to sign in this time around so i click on sign in i enter my email address and i enter my password and i click on sign in So that is the test I want to carry out. After that, after clicking on signing, I want to stop my test. So I click on the stop button, stop recording. And the recording will stop. All right, if I click on it back. All right, so my recording, I've, I've stopped my recording now. So the next thing for me to do is to save it. And for me to save it, I need to click on this save button, right? So if you click on it, and as I said, J JMeter uses JMX, right? So I need to select the JMX file, and I need to select the site that I want it to save for me, which is qa.gifree.com. That is one testing on, right? And I'll click on save. And you can see exporting to JMX. And that is the test at the bottom of my screen. Blue sky demo dot JMX. Let me see where it is in my in my folder. If it shows me, then I'll... all right. That is the unconfirmed. It's still downloading at the back at the background. Eventually it will load up. But that is the first one on my screen, as you can see. But I think it's still loading at the back end. Anyway, so that is my test. So what I need to do now is go back to my J meter. But before that, let's go back to the slide and see the next step. So you click on save. You select the J JMX. You select the URL and you click on save go back to your jmeter and click on upload okay let's go back to the jmeter all right so i want to open a new project now which is the project i use the uh blaze meter chrome extension to run right all right so what what did i name it again blue sky demo 22 all right so let me look for it here it should be somewhere here all right so it's in my download folder and as you can see blue sky demo 22.gmx that is the name as you can see at the bottom of your screen that is the name and name the project at the beginning blue sky demo project blue sky demo 22.jmx so that's the same file i'll select here and i'll click on open if i click on open my previous test uh will disappear so as you can see i've loaded my new test so what blaze meter does for you is it has done all the work for you all the parameterization, all the HTTP requests. You can see HTTP header has added that for me, my user, my defined variables. So it has parameterized my, my URL for me. So anytime I'm calling my URL, instead of typing qa.gifree.com, it's going to I'll only use base underscore URL underscore one for me because that's the variable. It has passed for me. Uh, HTTP request default, he has done that for me. The cache manager, if there's any cache on the side, this will catch it. The HTTP authorization manager. So the test has added everything that I think I'm going to need for my test. It has added it for me. All right. And my trade group as well. So the, there are two things for me to do on here. All right. So my trade group. I can increase my trade group. It has added my trade group as well for me, right? So number of trade is only using one user. I can change that one to our previous one, 20. 
my ramp up period is only using one second. I can change that to 40 milliseconds, 40 seconds, right? Just like the previous test. That is the minor thing you have to do. Then the other thing you have to do is to add your listeners. But before that, let's see the test that has added for me. So you can see it's calling the base URL, the variable that I pass in my user defined variables. You can see instead of my IP address to be www.gifreet.com, it's just using the base URL, which is a variable that I has passed in my user defined variables earlier on. Yeah, as you can, this one. Right. Okay. So it's passing that. Let me go to. And when it gets to the login, the parameter, right? I did been I'm doing it straight on Apache before without using the Chrome extension, right? I have to I have to input this data in uh, manually myself. But he has helped me, the Chrome extension has helped me to do all the heavy lifting, right? He has helped me to do the majority of the work has been, has been done for me. Because as I'm clicking, he's recording it. As I'm clicking, he's recording it, right? So what is left for me to do is to actually add uh, my listeners. Because that's the only thing it will not add for you, your listeners. So I need to decide what type of listeners I want to use. So I will use table and I'm going to use graph, right? Uh, where's the graph? Uh, tree, rather. So I'm going to use two listeners. And I can actually add assertion listeners as well. If I'm using any assertion, I can include that one as well. Assertion result, I can include that if I'm using any assertion. Uh, so yes, that is it. When you are using Chrome extension, that is what you have to do. You need to increase your thread group because it's going to run it based on one user and one second. But now you can add, amend that to the total number of users you want to emulate and your ramp up period, you can amend that manually right after you upload your file then you need to add your listeners which is probably your table your tree whatever you want to use i haven't added assertion assertion uh validation method here which is my assertion i didn't add that one so i only added assertion result although I'll, probably i'll add that one later so i can run this test now you know what i've done is I use BlazeMeter to run. I use BlazeMeter Chrome extension to run my test by recording it. So every click I perform, it's going to record it. Every click, it will record it. Every click, it will record it. And when I'm done recording, I'll go back to the BlazeMeter Chrome extension. I'll click on my stop. I'll go to save. And I'll select uh the jmx uh file to be saved right i'll select jmeter jmx the product that you run the url that you are using you select that one and you click on save then you come back to your apache jmeter to upload your saved results so you click on open then you have to look for your file when this is open up to you anywhere you've saved it probably in your downloads or in your documents wherever that folder whatever wherever that gmx file is you need to go to that location and open it up all right so don't let me go all right so let me go back and run this test so what is left to do now after the majority of the heavy lifting has been done for us is to go back to our usual way of running it click on run and the test should start running as you can see So it's the same approach with what we've done so far, just that when we when when we are on 
Apache JMeter, everything we did on Apache JMeter, the first time we did it manually, we input everything manually, we right click on test plan, uh, go to add our HTTP request, right click on HTTP request to add our sampler or our trade group, right click on our trade group to add our listeners, we do everything manually, right? But this time around, every, lift, every lifting has been done for us through the BlazeMeter Chrome extension, right? So all we added was our listeners and you increase the number of your threads and your ramp up. That is all. And there you go. Boom. Click on go. And that is your test result displayed onto you. I'll open the floor for another five minutes before I go to the last session that I'll be showcasing to you, which is a blaze meter itself as a performance measure. To it's a very performance. It's a very powerful too but it's a paid version you have to pay for it you can still carry out few tests on it but you are limited to what you can do but if you pay for it if your organization pay for it then it is a very heavy tool powerful tool to use because you can simulate uh network you can simulate region i, I can simulate the I want my test to come from uh, one region in India or one part of Nigeria. You know, I can I can do all that with the paid version. So any question before I move on to the final, the last session for today? Can we call it automation? This is not automation, no. This is performance testing. It's different from automation. Automation, you need to write script. After writing your script, then you automate it. But this one, we are not writing script, right? Because we are performing, we are doing a non-functional testing. We are after performance issues. We want to see whether the right response time is returning back to us. We want to check the memory, the CPU, you know, non-functional testing. And from my previous lesson as well last week, we have different type of performance testing as well. Performance testing just sits in the center of it. You have soak testing, you have spike testing, you have load testing, you know, you have various type of testing. But that being said, it's not everything that will be carried out at your workplace. Or... And as I made mention last week as well, it's just a good thing to have an idea because nowadays they are looking for jack of all trades when it comes to testing roles. But we actually have people, testers, that, that solely focus on performance testing. They don't do any other thing. They only do performance testing. Even if you ask them, they might not even know how to carry out functional testing because they only concentrate, they only employ them for performance testing role, right? But as a functional tester, it's always a good tool to, to know, to be jack of all trades, to know how you can carry out your API testing, to know a bit about performance testing because you never know what your next job will be, right? So that is why it's good to have the knowledge and you can now develop on the knowledge that you've gained, if you understand what I'm talking about. Now I want to use Blaze Meta itself as a performance tool. So if I go back to, I think I have it open somewhere. No, if I go back to Google, www. So log in to Blazemeter. All right. All right, because I'm already logged in, that is why you can see my name pop up straight away because I didn't, I think the last, last time I used it, I didn't log out. So this is the dashboard of Blazemeter for you. And I can create a test from here as well. I can load my test here as well and run it. How do we do that? 
Okay, let's go back to the slide quickly. So now, okay. So to do that, all right. All right, so to do that, uh, so to do that, I need to click on create test, right? And I need to choose performance test. It will load up. I'll wait for it. All right. So you should have a screen like this, but at this stage, I've not uploaded any script. It's just like when I'm using a Chrome extension, I need to upload uh, a script onto here. Probably I've, I've had the initial run from JMeter, but because JMeter is restricted or limited to the number of runs or number of users you can emulate, you need a bigger platform, then I can upload that script onto BlazeMeter and run the same test using wider criteria, right? Okay, so I click on upload script. And I need to go and choose a script. So let me choose Blue Sky Demo JMX. And I'll click on open. It should load something up for me. I don't know whether I still got any extra minutes left or test run left, but I'll try it. And as you can see, it has loaded the script for me. My Blue Sky Demo 22.gmx. You can see the file scenario definition. It has loaded that for me, right? So now I need to set my criteria. So what I need to do now is to set the criteria. I'm not too sure whether it's going to allow me to run this test because I'm not sure that I still go minutes remaining so now if you are using a paid version of blaze meter you can emulate 5000 10000 users more than that eating at your system at the same time but for someone like me who is using the free version i cannot do that and i'm not even sure it's going to allow me to, to emulate 20 users i don't think so it's going to tell me I, I can't do it so i'll reduce let me try 10 9 or 10 let me try let me try to emulate 10 users right at uh, the duration it's there's no way it's going to allow me to run this test for 20 minutes uh to iterate for 20 20 minutes so i'll reduce that to one minute because it's a minute so i'll reduce that to one minute because i'm using a paid version it should just turn back and tell me sorry you can't do that so my ramp up time as well i'll leave that as I'll, I'll leave that one as one. So these are the things you can do if you are using the paid version, the load distribution. You can you can emulate different locations. You can emulate like 10 different locations, 20 different location regions and all that. But if I try to add location, it will tell me, sorry, mate, go and pay. As you can see, need multiple location testing. Sorry, go and pay. Uh, so I can't carry out that. So that those are the advantages of using BlazeMeter. You can use anywhere, even your village back home, you can emulate them if they've got network, you know? Anywhere, anywhere around the world, you can emulate the users there. And if I scroll down, uh, you can set your failure criteria as well, which I can't do. The end user experience monitoring, mm -hmm. If you are integrating with any other third party system, you can do that. Uh, network emulation as well. You can do network emulation. If I enable this, I can say I want it to run on internet. I want it to run on Wi Fi, on 3G, on 3G, poor, 5G, good. You know, I can set all these criteria, emulate the real life scenarios uh, using BlazeMeter. Well, because I'm using a free version, I might not be able to perform all this one, but you'll still see the graphical. If it allows me to run this test, you'll see how powerful the tool is when it displays the result back onto me. So that's the only little criteria I can set because I'm using the free version right, of BlazeMeter. So the next thing is for me to click on Run. Hopefully it runs for me. If not, I'll just show you the the ones I, run early, I ran earlier. So if I click on run test, your test will run with following configuration, one engine, 10 total thread, maximum duration of one minute, launch server. 
So warming up. Starting your test. Starting your test takes two to four minutes. So you can sit back, get a coffee and a biscuit. Relax while I run the test for you. So still warming up. You can abort this test if you want to abort the test. If you are if you don't if you no longer want to continue, you can abort it. But in our own case, let it continue and let's see what what the result will be. Still running. It should finish any time from now. I'm even surprised it's running this test for me. So, if there's any question, we can use this. We can use this uh, opportunity to be inputting sending in our questions and i'll try and i'll try and answer the ones i can answer all right let me go back to the slide and i'll come back to that when it's done okay uploading the script and all that before running the script Set load configuration. Now I clicked on run test. Launch server, warming up. Your test is ready to go. All right, so at the, after the test, I should have a dashboard that looks similar to this. Let me see if I have it now. Yeah, so now it has finished uh running my test for me and you can see uh you, you use seven vu that is seven virtual user right and my throughput is 0.34 per eight uh per seconds average throughput you can see the total errors i'm getting 6.25 total errors my average the average response time is two seconds which i believe is it's good enough but again that depends on on the documentation that has been given to you, you have to compare what they are expecting as their average response time. For my, but for my own test, you can see my average response time for, for 2.13 seconds, which I believe that is good enough. And you can see the bandwidth, the response time, you know, you can see, and if I scroll down, you can see the graphical uh, illustration of the test as well which is very very powerful let's now imagine if you are using a paid version that you can emulate regions villages wi-fi poor network you know you can be as close to real life scenario as possible so on this note that concludes uh, our journey uh, of performance testing using JMeter, BlazeMeter Chrome extension, and BlazeMeter. So next week, uh, a friend of mine will, will take you through New Load, which is another performance tool, and I believe you don't want to miss that as well. And on this note, I'll open the floor. If there's any question, I'll try and take it. I hope you've you've been able to gain one or two things from this session. I think hopefully I've come out. I've been able to answer a few of your questions as well. So let's see if, if you've got any question for me to answer. For JMeter and Blaze, are we going to be writing scripts at any point or we refer to our input and click only as? Yeah, your input. See, the things that you are setting, they are your scripts that you want to use to run it, right? Unlike the functional testing that you have to write 
uh, giving I navigate to gifree.com when I click on this, when I click on that. After you've written the BDD format, you need to go again and now write the code for it. No, we are not doing that here. So the criteria that you are setting right from the very onset, the way you are creating your uh, samplers, the way you are creating your assertion, your HTTP request, what you are setting in there, your thread, those are the tests, those are the scripts that you are writing because this is the most important, your thread. And it depends on the type of performance testing that you are carrying out. Your, at your organization, I don't know, it might be a low testing that it's their concern there. That, that means you want to be carrying out a low testing. That means you have to, you want to load the system with as much users as possible, trying to break the system. That means you need to increase your trade to probably 2,000 or wherever is stipulated or specified for you uh, to use for your load testing. For your organization, for uh, someone else, it might be a spike testing that they are concerned about, or it might be a combination of two or more performance testing, but you are not writing, uh, you are not writing a script down. Yeah, you, you should have a plan on how you intend to carry out your performance testing, yeah, your basic script on what what and what you'll be carrying out, the type of testing you'll be you want to do, whether it's uh let me go back to the slides. Whether you know you still have to write basic thing that you need to that will start as your guideline down because you probably want to be eating on the search button, how you want to get your search button, you can write basic scripts down but you have to interpret that when you come to your apache that will turn into your http ip server blah 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 that input that i hope i've been able to answer that let me check another question Okay, thanks for the answer on assertion, but does it mean that while running performance tests, you can as well be verifying element visible? When you say element, let me go back to the test, to the page. While running the test, right, and when I landed on this page, let me go back to, okay, let me first go to, Apache, let me go to the response assertion. All right. So for my response assertion, I can use text response. I can use response code. Probably I'm getting a 200 response code back. I can use a response message. I can use header. Really? I can use any of this one. If I'm using a response code, that means I want to assert that the response code I'm getting back. That is why if you, it's, you need like an API kind of uh, knowledge as well when you are carrying out your performance test and then it will become more clear as well because when you are carrying out your API testing, there's something you call status code. Your status code will display back to you whether it's 200, 201, 400 and so on and so forth. Same thing when you are doing your performance testing. If it's eating the right server, if it's, re if it's eating the right endpoint, it will return back to you your response code which should be 200 if it's getting it. So you can use that as for your as, as, uh, for your assertion as well. Same thing as text response. So I was using, I used text response earlier on, right? And that is when I came on this side that I said, because everything that has been written on, we are not looking at the code here. I'm not right clicking, I'm not right clicking on this one and because th that is what you do in your functional testing. I'm not right clicking on this one, going to inspect and checking that these elements i'm not using elements as the my as my validation method here right you do that from your functional testing you cover that one that aspect so i'm not using element to do my assertion here instead i'm using what i can see on this page as a text as my assertion i can decide to go to okay can you see testing api on this page i can use that as my assertion because I just want to make sure I landed on this page. All right, and I know the items on that page. And again, 
I can scroll down and say, can you see table tennis text, this text message on this page? That is what I'm using. And I hope I've been able to answer that question. If not, you can contact the admin for clarification or, and, uh, or put the question back on the platform. Bruce Carlos it at the Telegram. And, I'll try as much as possible to answer that again. All right, forgive me. Uh, uh, let me see. Have I missed anything? Uh, what is the difference between J meter and Blaze meter? Okay, I'll give you a very direct and straight answer. The J meter is an open source. Blaze meter is a paid version. J meter, there are a group of developers out there that are making it possible for me and you to be able to use it free of charge without any charge. But there is limitation to it. Blaze meter, because you are paying for it and you want to get the maximum out of the money that you are paying for it, it's like your EE or your Vodafone that you are paying £70 per month for your unlimited minutes. If you are not giving the unlimited minutes, you question them now. You you can take them to, you can you can, you can can sue them. I'm paying for unlimited limit. You are giving me a uh, restriction on the number of calls, you know? So the paid version, what you are paying for, you get the most out of what you are paying for. So you can do more, way more than enough. What you cannot do on JMeter. On JMeter, you cannot do anything like a certain region. You cannot emulate Wi-Fi. I cannot emulate network. I cannot integrate with a third party system. That is the difference. But that being said, it is still more than enough some for for some for some organization out there using JMeter. It it's it's okay for them. So because some are using it, why some that are heavily into performance testing will prefer to go with a paid version that they can do more than enough on it. So that is a simple and very straightforward answer I can think of, and I hope I've been able to differentiate between JMeter and BlazeMeter. It's actually the same thing, just that you get more out of one you, and you get less out of one. All right. Let me see if there's any other question. Hope you can get the video for all performance testing on YouTube. I missed the previous performance. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm, I'm sure by now, I think the first session must have been uploaded onto YouTube. If not, probably it's going to be uploaded anytime from now. Uh, all right. I think that is all from me. From me to you, I think I've been able to answer most of the question. And hopefully, probably by now, you must have known at least 60 percent when it comes to performance testing you must have known the key words that you can tell them if paraventure you are you get a telephone call from the agency and ask you to talk probably a bit about performance testing i'm sure by now you know the key words that you can use to i'll, I'll say this english words to bamboos them right on the phone because now you know more than what you knew two weeks ago now you can actually tell them more than enough for interview now and when you get to the actual workplace then you can learn more on it or even in your spare time you can learn more on it because when it comes to the world of it right it, there is always continuous uh, improvement continuous um, uh reading you have to continue uh continually develop yourself there's nothing like know it all there's nothing like you know what i've been doing this thing for donkey years it changes things changes every time application changes it world changes so that is why day in day out you have to improve yourself you have to equip yourself the better and you have to learn more 
don't sit back because you've been taught A, B, C, and you believe it ends uh, at A, B, and C. There is D, E, F, even to Z out there. But if you don't explore, you you'll never know. So that is why you should continually improve yourself, either by going to W3 school, going to YouTube, research, you know? Research, 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 research. That is that is all. So for me, that will be the end of my journey with you guys. I hope you've been able to enjoy it. I've tried as much as possible to make it as fun as possible and to be able to cover everything that is needed to be covered. So thank you. Thank you so much. Have a good night.